Today's episode is brought to you by Sunderman Tube in Baltic, South Dakota. Hello and welcome to Brassy Business Podcast, where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with business owners and what they have done to make their businesses shine. I am your host, Haley Ruff, and let's talk business. This week, we are talking with a business who literally creates art. She has some of the most creative ideas that I have been lucky enough to be able to do with her. I've known her for a while now. I've worked with her, like I said. Let's welcome Deanna. You are a class act, and I'm so (laughs) excited to have you here today. Let me introduce your business, Phoenix Photos. Can you talk about it for a minute? Yes. Thanks so much for having me. So um, I'm Deanna. Mm -hmm. and I have been in business for 10 years. We actually just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. With something big. Yeah, we went on a 10-year anniversary anniversary cruise, so that was a lot lot of fun. Um, Okay, so Phoenix Photos originally started, I'll just kind of give you a little background because in order to understand where we're at now in 10 years, you have to understand the, Mm -hmm. the startup of it. So Phoenix Photos started as a hobby. Okay. But I've always known that I wanted to be a photographer. But I was also one of those that was told that photography would never make you any money. <laughs> and so I've been I went told to college. That before. Yeah, I went to college. I did the whole thing. But photography has always had a piece in my heart. Um, and it wasn't until I was working in the oil field and I got laid off from the oil field that I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I going to just get any job or should I do something I'm passionate about? And I went full fledged full-time into photography and never looked back. And so I actually have not been physically employed from a business since 2015. Oh, wild. So I have been Uh self-employed 100% for almost 10 years as well. So so, um, it has grown quite a bit. I originally started with like lots of smaller projects, family pictures, senior Mm -hmm. pictures, things like that. But now my focus is in the wedding industry. So I'm full-time wedding photography and, um, but I kind of do a little bit of everything, Mm -hmm. which you've been (laughs) able to experience a little bit. But um, so that's kind of the history of the business. Um, But yeah, 10 years. Mm -hmm. I can't believe. It's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing when you look back where you are in 10 years, because photography, like you said, is an art. (laughs) Yeah, it is an art. Um, And as a creative, like you look back and for me 10 years ago, when I see stuff, I'm like, oh, please put it away. (laughs) But now, I mean, but it's important to celebrate where you've come from. I mean, art's always changing and artists are always developing. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you've not always been in the Gillette area though. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So you moved where? I I remember when it happened because you also helped your sister at a preschool for a little bit. That's right. You moved right when my daughter started. So like you were there for like (laughs) two weeks. Yep. Yep. So, um, I actually moved to New Mexico. Okay. Um, at the time I was under the impression that like photography, you can go anywhere. Um, you can start up anywhere, you can get clients anywhere. Uh, and being a wedding photographer too, it's a little bit less of those clients aren't necessarily repeat clients all the time. And so I thought I can go anywhere. Our family had gone through quite a few changes. And so I thought that like the fresh start, the clean start in a new state would be the best idea for us. Um, and I quickly learned that nowhere is home like Gillette. Okay. (laughs) So I actually came back every month for a week or two. And when I would come back, I would service my clients. I still did weddings and advertised for weddings here. And so I never actually, I would say I never actually left Gillette. Yes, I built the business in New Mexico as well. However, it did not thrive or flourish quite as well as where my home base was. And so it was a learning curve for sure. Uh, New Mexico is a pretty closed circuit in that they don't really welcome new businesses as, as, as well as I thought they were going mm-hmm. to. Um, so the industry was very competitive, even though my business was already established. It was very competitive because I was a new business in their community. right? And so it was really hard to break out. In fact, I even tried because that was during the pandemic, which right before I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about how photography has evolved since then but um, I was there during the pandemic and that is when you know everything shut down Mm -hmm. and um I really wanted to do something for the seniors that were graduating high school they weren't going to get graduation they weren't going to get prom like they weren't going to get anything and so I had come up with this big project where I was going to do free graduation pictures and we were going to put them in their cap and gowns and I could safely social distance like 
you know, I don't, I could be 200 yards from somebody and still get a great picture. Right. right. So I felt safe doing it. I felt comfortable doing it. And so I put it out there to all the parents and they just, they latched onto that. They were so excited. And I was like, this is how I'm going to get my name out there. Right. And then I got a call from the superintendent and the high school principal there where I was living and said, if you proceed to do this and take kids out of their home during a stay at home order, you will never work for the school. You will never step foot on the school property. Your business will never. Um, and we will never do a contract with you ever. And so I was like, that's detrimental to my business. Right. Now. So that's like, those are like the little things that kind of like I said, New Mexico wasn't super welcoming mm -hmm. to what I was bringing into the community. And so I did. I canceled everything. The parents were so sad, so upset. And those poor seniors. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, and so I had to go to the drawing board and I did something completely different. I took whatever they had sent me for a selfie and I had done yard signs. Um, and so they still got to have some type of digitally created, you know, from their selfie that they sent. Right. Um, that was commemorative of their graduation. But yeah, that's just like one experience that I have experienced in like in that transition of not being welcoming to a right. new business. So there is no home like a Gillette <laughs> for business, in my opinion, right. from what I've experienced. But um, but yeah, I travel all over still. I still actually do work in New Mexico. Really? So even this last year, we went twice for weddings in New oh, Mexico. Cool. Well, and that was what I was going to ask you about. I remember talking to you about this once and you said that their styles are very different very. than weddings up here. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So I think um the southwest in general is just a whole different like the editing styles are different the wedding colors themes venues is all different um down there they focus a lot of on a lot of adobe buildings right oh, yep. and like so like a lot of oranges and yellows and things like that up here we're more like prairie yeah so it's, it's or, or or even the black hills or the big horns it's more green so it's just a totally different vibe and so that probably could have had something to do with the advertising and marketing. My portfolio was very much Wyoming geared. Yeah. Or at least the Northwest. Um, and their style is very different. They're, you know, there's chilies hanging in their pictures or, you know, there's, it's just different. And I didn't have anything to show for that. I do uh -huh. now, but um, it's just a totally different scenery right. than what we have up here. And you had said that they focus a lot more on their flowers down there, right? Yes, they do. Um, and I think that has something to do with like, because the styles are so orangey and yellow and everything, mm -hmm. all the pops of colors that they can pull in floral, the better. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're just way more vibrant than than what we, what we typically are. see, what uh -huh. we typically see in the industry. I also feel like our area, because we're I mean, Wyoming is pretty remote still, like mm -hmm. Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, like we are pretty remote still. And so I think that what people see as trending in the wedding industry is a little bit behind where the rest of the nation is. And so trends we're seeing today or this summer were trending across the nation maybe two years ago. Yeah. So we kind of see that evolution a little bit. So things I was seeing in New Mexico that were like cutting edge and latest and greatest, I'm seeing that now in my weddings this year. Okay. So, and it's been a couple years. So it's just kind of a cycle process and yeah, but the, the styles are just very different. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. So we kind of talked about 2020. That probably was a huge hit to you. Yes and, and no. Um, so there was a lot of help for small business mm -hmm. during, I mean, not right away, mm -hmm. not right away. Like right away, it was scary. It was like, you can't be self-employed and feed your family at right. the same time. Um, but like, it was, ama it was amazing how much help that there was for the small businesses in the mm -hmm. end. Um, they came out with like loans and grants and, you know, all sorts of things that you could qualify to to get. Now, I didn't qualify for a lot of that because I was in New Mexico. Oh. But then I moved back to Wyoming during the pandemic because when New Mexico shut down and said, we will not open again. You're like, do <laughs> I'm this. like, I can't run a business. Wyoming opened up. We're doing weddings. Uh -huh. like, I'm sorry. I'm out. And I also had personally was going through a lot and I was, I actually got a divorce uh, during the pandemic. And so um, that also brought me home mm -hmm. to Gillette. And once I got here, it was, it was much easier to just, you know, get back into the grind um, safely right? and without that concern. And so the pandemic changed the industry, I think, because a lot of people started 
watching finances a little bit better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I think that, I mean, photography is a service. It's a luxury service. Not everybody can afford it or will afford it or makes it a priority to afford it. Um, and so during the pandemic, it was out the window for most, most yeah. people. So what did you do? Like what pivot did you make to keep yourself relevant and bring in the income in? Yeah. So, I mean, nobody stopped getting married. Yeah. So I think that might have been a big determining factor in me going full fledged into the wedding side okay. of things because they're, you know, people are still going to get married, whether that's at the courthouse, a venue, uh, their backyard. And you, and you want the memories. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and nobody can really replace the, the photography side of things for a wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, Your like iPhone you is just take, not the same. So, and, and, you know, honestly, the iPhone, a lot of people are like, iPhones take just as great pictures. Yes, they do. You're right. They, they are the same megapixel as my camera, you know, like they take awesome pictures, but they don't replace the experience that you're going to get by having somebody come and pose you, right. you know, manipulate the light, like all, all the things that a photographer an experienced photographer will give you. So to me, I'm like, yeah, phones take great pictures. I take pictures with my phone as well, but it's not going to replace the experience. So most people don't choose to take iPhone pictures at their wedding. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, that's, that was the pivot moment. Like, okay, people may not be hiring people for, or photographers for family pictures or business headshots right now or whatever, but they're still going to get married. Yeah. And so that's, that was one of the pivoting moments. And I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've got to keep pushing forward in the wedding industry because Mm -hmm. people are going to keep getting married. Yeah. That makes sense. So so that was kind of the outcome of your pivoting moment was yeah. like kind of honing in on, okay, I, I'm going to still do all of the photography areas, mm-hmm. but maybe the for the wedding industry is what's like calling me. Yeah. And I think that you also in business, you find certain things that you're super passionate about, right? Yeah. And you get excited about those things. And I cows. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Some of us have cows, chickens. Um, so I think in like if it brought me joy, like and if I woke up and I was excited, mm-hmm. it had nothing to do with the client relate. Well, I can't say that. It has a lot to do with the client relationship. But like when you wake up and you're excited to go to work, uh-huh. like that that's the feeling I want every day. And that's what I get for every wedding. And so some of the other stuff that's fillers. I don't get as much joy from it. Okay. Am I good at it? Sure. Like, do I, do I, you know, do I enjoy that? Yeah. But does it bring me like that excitement? <laughs> I get feel yeah, like yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, I think that the more I realized that, that it brought me so much joy, the more, again, that pivot moment came. Like, uh-huh. okay, this is where I want to enjoy going to work every day, especially if I'm in a if I'm going to work for myself, yeah. if I'm going to choose this, <laughs> then I should be able to control if I enjoy it or not. If I enjoy it or not. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, but do I still do everything else? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I don't find joy in that too. Don't, right. don't get me wrong. Like I'm not going to show up to your family pictures, like a bump on a log. No. You know, like that's not it. No. It's just the excitement for me that comes from doing weddings. It's mm-hmm. just a totally different you know, relationship that I get with my couples than I do with my families or seniors or boudoir or whatever. It might right. Be. Yeah. So you've tried lots of different styles. You've tried lots of different mm, sessions. Mm-hmm. Like we've done unicorns. You and yeah. I have done cows. <laughs> yeah. You've done babies. You've done Easter. You've like done it all. Yeah. Have you ever like thrown an idea out there that just flat out like did not work? Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes. And you know what, when you, I, I think every photographer in town can, can speak to this as well. When you put money out there for like a whole setup and mm-hmm. it doesn't take, you have this moment of like, what am I doing? This is the month of the great slowdown. Like, you know, nothing's going to come back. Nobody's doing pictures because you can't figure out why uh-huh. nobody wanted that. Um, And there are so many options when it comes to like mini sessions, Mm -hmm. specialized holiday sessions. And I think every photographer in our community has kind of find their, their niche, right? Like they, um, there's certain people that really thrive on like Santa Claus, or there's certain people that really thrive on newborn. And there's a lot of, um, industry respect as far as like, I don't want to say stay in your own lane type thing, right. but like when you decide that that's what you're going to do and you're really good at it and you hone in on that, people can recognize that. Yeah. And so, um, 
for me, when I like started to try to do it all, I just, I quickly realized like, you can't do everything because mm-hmm. it's not going to work. You're going to spend money to create these sessions that not everybody's going to want. Yeah. Um, and so I quickly realized that if I plan ahead, I do my whole year mini session planning in December of the previous year okay. and I schedule them. I say, these are the dates I'm going to do them and this is what it's going to look like and book it. Mm-hmm. And that has solved a lot of problems for me because the same people, you know, every year are like, okay, well this year she did Easter's last right. year. So we're going to do the same one because they were so cute and there's a lot of trust there um, rather than just trying to throw out new ideas all the time because mm-hmm. it, it may not take. Right. And then you've dumped a lot of money into something that maybe nobody wants. Right. That makes sense. So, and you can't do it all. <laughs> like I think as business owners, we really try to wear a lot of hats. Yep. And that is a big problem. I, I, I need to accept that I cannot do it all between right. advertising, marketing, editing, client engagement. Like you just, you can't do it all. No, no. So. Sometimes you have to ask for help. Or let things go. Right. Like I really don't have to do seven different types of mini sessions this month. You right. Know? Like I, I've got to let some of that go because I don't have time. Uh-huh. So. No, that makes sense. So what do you think is like the biggest struggle the photography industry as a whole is facing right now? You know, I would actually say recently a lot of discussion in like the photography world is the creation of like AI. Okay. A lot of photographers have concern that that might be a direction that we should feel threatened by. Um, And actually, as a funny joke, I even did my Christmas cards in AI. Like (laughs) I did. And I sent it to my husband while he was at work on nights the night before Christmas. And I'm like, look at our digital Christmas card. And he just laughed about it. It was really funny. And I posted it on Facebook. Uh And I'm like, like, I'm a photographer. I have the capability of doing my own Christmas cards. More than I do, definitely. I had six fingers in my picture. Like, okay, listen. AI is great. It can give you all of the face filters that a lot of these apps can give you, right? It can pop your eyes, make you look 10 years younger. Like it can do that. Uh Fantastic. But you're not going to have the right amount of fingers. (laughs) (laughs) Or two fingers or something. Right. And um, I actually had a photographer kind of call me out on it on a photography group that I ended up seeing. And she was like, yeah, a photographer I follow posted her Christmas card. And she didn't even come out and say it was AI. And I'm like, I didn't know I needed to. Right. Look at the picture. You can see I have six fingers. I thought it was funny. To me, it was a joke um, because I really like it was a selfie image that I had taken of myself and now digitally manipulated. And it wasn't good. Like, (laughs) but people found it funny and they (laughs) thought it was fun. And and I guess um, I, I guess that for AI, there's a lot you can do with it. But going back to like the client experience, nothing is going to replace that experience you have with somebody who's experienced with lighting, mm-hmm. editing, like 90% of the work is done after I leave the client, right? right? Like the camera takes great pictures, but the uh, photographer creates the art. Mm-hmm. So what you put on your wall was created by me. Mm-hmm. It's not what the camera did. So... um. I would say that most would say it's AI. For me, I don't feel like that's a, a, a big concern, but I think the industry would say that di- digital manipulation, mm-hmm. AI, the access to that that the public has is a problem. Yeah. I And I have mixed feelings about AI. Like, I don't use it a bunch, but every once in a while when you're making Facebook posts or you're doing social mm-hmm. media stuff and you're like, I need words and there's no words that are coming, I have a little program I can put my words yep. into and it makes them sound so much better. That's right. But for like at least pictures and whatnot, I don't use a lot of AI like that way, but I do, I see both sides of it completely. Well, and some photographers would even say that that's why they watermark these huge watermarks over faces and stuff so that p- clients can't take their pictures and then put them into an AI generator or whatever and totally alter what mm-hmm. they've taken. And I can understand that. Like no artist wants to feel like something was taken from yeah. them. Like, hey, I created that for you and now you've completely changed it. Uh, but at the same time, I also feel like watermarking takes away from the quality of the image. It takes away like, so I just throw out there that like, hey, I I know you're going to love your picture. So I'm not going to throw a giant watermark on it. But yeah. if you throw up an AI filter or something on that picture, I might call, I might comment on it right. ask you to please take it down. Like, like I still own the copyright of every image I mm-hmm. take. So has that been a problem? 
like watermarking photo, or, or like photo manipulation uh yeah oh. yeah i mean everybody kind of like i mean you even see it like when you take a selfie on snapchat right like the first thing you do is swipe to see what filter looks better and i think that people even do that on their professional pictures they've taken it's not that they don't love their picture i think they just might want to see it a little bit different and mm -hmm. so um i would say it's a problem no matter who takes the image it whether no matter how much you spent uh -huh. um but i i don't always see it either i just ask my clients to have the respect for what they hired me to do mm -hmm. and i think most of them they they do and that's what keeps them coming back right so like we've worked together numerous times and i always try to make sure i tag you in the pictures whenever <laughs> i post and them i appreciate that <laughs> and i guess that's just never crossed my mind though yeah. like i've never thought well you know she did all this work into it so let me put my own edits over it i just no yeah well it happened i think it happens frequently mm -hmm. like i said i don't always see it so i don't always i wouldn't always know but even cropping like did so if you crop an image that a photographer has taken like you download it then you crop it and now you go and print it you've actually altered the pixels on the image and so because they'll expand right like you've changed the crop on the image okay. and so i even tell clients like listen if you want a closer crop or whatever like please let me know like i'll do it so that it's still going to maintain its resolution and you're not going to blow up an eight by ten and now you're all pixelated and blurry and can't figure out why so i think I don't know. It goes back to the client relationship. Like, Mind blown. Yeah. I had no idea about that. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, I've had clients that literally took a, a picture that I've taken and then they cropped it down smaller, like mm -hmm. a closer crop and then went and blew up like a 30 by 40 above their mantle and then are wondering why their faces are blurry. And I'm like, well, you should have let me crop it. <laughs> like, like, because I can, I can do it in a high resolution so that we still maintain the pixels, you know, per, per inch. So, um, Anyway, yeah, just little things. But again, that goes back to the client's expectation. Like if that expectation is set during session, they're going to know that. Right. Like they have, I've already talked to them about that, right? Like they already know that I'll do that for them. Mm -hmm. So they, they, don't, they don't need to worry about it. Um, but tagging your photographer mm -hmm. is a great thing because mm -hmm. that's like the, that's the biggest pat on the back yeah. that you can give your photographer. Right. Well, and I mean, obviously, I love small businesses. That's that's not a secret yeah, at this point right. in time. But I appreciate the time, you know, that you came out, that you gave me, that you did such a good product. And I want to share that with everybody. And I want yeah. them to know that, hey, if you want amazing pictures, Phoenix Photos right here. Well, Give and then they all want pictures with the cows. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the ponies. <laughs> and the ponies. I just love the ponies. Oh, funny. Oh, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, we love when clients tag us. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a way that I, I've gotten to the point in my business where I don't do a whole lot of advertising. Um, over time, just word of mouth has kind of been where mm -hmm. my client base comes from, which is awesome. Yeah. It saves me quite a bit of money. But at the same time, like if you can see the quality of a product, you're like, I want that too. And mm -hmm. I'm willing to invest in that. And so I love when clients, you know, post pictures or tag me in pictures and then because it, it'll show up in their like their memories. Yeah. So years down the road, they're sharing them again because they posted. And I since I was tagged, I get to see them again. Yeah. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, look how much your children have grown. Like I took their pictures when they were two and now they're 10. Right. Like it's amazing to watch the evolution, you know, over the course of the business as well. So we talked about that earlier. Yeah, that's awesome. So you've done it all. You've done weddings, you've done seniors, you've done families, you've done newborns. Mm -hmm. What's the wildest thing that's ever happened on a shoot? I think there's a special place in everybody's heart for the newborn photographer. <laughs> I remember when we did newborn photography <laughs> for both of my kids and I'm like, never again. This is awful and I do not have enough patience for this. Uh, so um, there are a few that I will just send my clients yeah. to here in town. I'm like, oh, they're, they're the best. Like I, it, it takes a special level of patience. Oh, it so does. For sure. And you get pooped on and beat on and it's just not something that brings me joy in the morning. <laughs> And so I, so yeah, I quickly realized that that's just a not for me. No, no, no. So you I don't can, want the newborn poo all I over can, the shirt. No, I can do it, but 
again, I haven't developed that area of crap mm -hmm. quite as well as some others in town. So I'm happy, happy to be like, here, this is where you should go. Uh -huh. um, especially if they're going to provide the same client experience that I, I can, mm -hmm. I, I trust, I, like, I want my clients to have the best experience and I know for newborn photography, that's not me. So did you have like <laughs> one session that's just like flat out? Yeah. You're like, okay, let's hear about it. <laughs> so first of all, this baby shows up to my studio and the the mom, I don't feel like pr prepared me for what I was going to be getting into. Uh, the baby was extremely gassy, oh. extremely fussy. Mm -hmm. Nothing was winning for it. And now I've done lots of training, right? Like I've done lots of training uh, to pose baby bonding, mm -hmm. things like that, so that the baby has trust when they come into your studio and can hear you and relax and, and whatever and, and tricks to do that nothing was going to to work and I could tell from the moment they walked in the door I'm like this is gonna be the world's longest session and the poor mom like I felt so bad for her you could tell she was so exhausted nothing was working for her either mm -hmm. right um I have never seen so much baby poo and uh spit up <laughs> in my entire life and I ran out of, I ran out of blankets, like, because <laughs> what you do is you lay your blankets and you peel them back for different colors and things. And, um, and I mean, babies pee, you yeah. can't control that. And, but there was just so much bodily fluid. <laughs> and so I, everywhere from after, every direction. Yeah, and, and like I said, I, I just, I, it, it was probably that session that day that I'm like, you know, no. Right. It's just not for me. Uh -huh. And like, I love babies, right? right. Like I love, like, I love the squishy babies, but bring me the babies for the family session or the mommy and me and, uh -huh. or the like in your home, in their nursery, cuddling and snuggling them more focused on baby bonding and less about posing them in a cute bucket. Right. I'll tell you where to go for that because I just, I can't be pooped on anymore. I just can't do it. And you can't do it all. Remember? It no, goes back you, you can't, can't do it. You all. can't do it all. You no. can't. So if they're going to get the better experience somewhere else, I'm going to send them there because yeah. I mean, even my best friend, she had a baby and I said, mm, nope, love her, but this is where you should <laughs> you go. You should go here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So whenever I book an interview, I always try to dive into their socials. I dive into people's websites yeah. just so that I have like a full view of the business. Yeah. I didn't have to dive super hard for you because <laughs> I know you, uh, but I looked at your Facebook okay. and I was scrolling and you have 49 five-star reviews. Like, yeah. and that's it. You have no, nothing smaller. Like that's amazing. And that alone tells me that you've built an amazing clientele and yeah. that you put out an awesome product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, reviews go a long way for small businesses. Well, they do. Like, I wish everybody wants you like, okay, word of advice to everybody out there. If you have a great experience, restaurant, any small business, like feel free to share that experience on their social media. Not just the like, bad. No. Yeah. The, the algorithms work that like these businesses that are reputable, they're going to show up in your feed. Mm -hmm. And if your friends are you know, giving them reviews and stuff, they're also going to show up in your feed. It helps small businesses a thousand percent. So please go give a good review today. Review There's a small a business today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to fool you. Like I've had some lower reviews, like not everything is cupcakes and rainbows. Oh, well, I didn't see them. Well, there, there might've been one on Google a few years ago, but it has been removed since. But, um, like they're, 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 not everybody jives. Right. It's it's how you come out of that though. Like how did I handle that as a business mm -hmm. that I'm proud of, right? Like am I proud of their one star review? No. Mm -hmm. But how I handled the one star review makes me happy. Right. Like right, as long as I go to bed like I did everything I could to make this client happy. That's mm -hmm. that's how business evolves. Um and I think that in the end she actually removed her review. She actually wasn't even my client to be honest, but uh she was just in attendance at an event I covered. Um, and so I think she's deleted it now, but it like business is not, it's not all cupcakes and rainbows mm -hmm. all the time. Hey guys, we're going to jump into an ad real quick. There's been so many times where we have been working on a project around the ranch and we just don't have the right supplies to get the project finished. Well, more than once, Sunderman Manufacturing has came in clutch to help us get our project finished. But now, not only do they sell agricultural products, they are now also a tube mill. Sunderman Tube. <laughs> See what they did there? Sunderman Tube is your go-to 
steel tube mill in the Northern Plains, where you get 100% American made steel tube. They have 11 different profiles, amazing customer service, and they can cut your perfect length for the project that you're working on. Give them a call at 605 529 5470 and buy directly from the tube mill. Tell them that Haley with Brassy Business Podcast sent you when you call them at 605 529 5470. It's not. No. So, yes, my clients do get a good experience, and that's on Facebook. You see that. And again, please shout out to your favorite small business today. But, um, but it's there there are any every business mm-hmm. like I don't want to seem like I'm above this, you know, because there are some there right. probably are some negative experiences. You can't please everybody. No, you can't. Oh, and like my personality definitely does not jive with everybody. Yeah. So I have a very big, loud personality to where yeah. when I come out in public, like I have a big personality, but like I also go home and hermit in my office frequently. Right. So like I get it. I, I know my personality isn't for everybody, just like you, you're your business probably isn't going to be for everybody also as much as you would love it to be. Yeah. Or my, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that in today's society, we are so accustomed to like the instantaneous response, Mm -hmm. right? Like the quicker that we get a response, the better for all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, and photography is not really that way. It's not instantaneous all the time. And creating those business boundaries too. Like I probably am not going to respond to you at 3 a.m. when you're on your night shift. Like I, there was a time where I did do that. Mm -hmm. But when I come back to you at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. and respond and now you're mad at me for that, like, I'm sorry. I was sleeping. I was sleeping. This is a business boundary. If if, If there's not a respect on the business boundary, then maybe you're not the best. We're not the best suited for one another. And so, yeah, like I don't, even though I have great reviews, I don't, I don't want to appear that there hasn't been struggle over the years because there definitely is. And there's, you know, there's, you just have to find a good fit. Mm -hmm. Once you find that good fit, you know, whoever that photographer is, they're going to provide you with the best service. And, um, and yeah, that just, it's not everybody's experience. So yeah, it's not always cupcakes and rainbows. It's not always unicorns and rainbows. No. As much as, as, much as we would love it. Right? As, as much as we would love it. Yeah. But in the end, you know, like as business owners, like we we can all do better to like admit when we're wrong, mm-hmm. right? And like take care of our customers the best we can. But it doesn't have to be at the sacrifice of our time, like our mm-hmm. sanity, our time. Like that's all worth worth money. Right. Well, <laughs> and I think that the, sometimes that's just half the bot battle. Like I remember when I still had the boutique, the biggest thing that I could ever do on customer service was admit when I was wrong yeah. and own it. Like even to this yeah. day, like I made a accounting error that messed with one of our employees recently. And I'm like, yeah, I messed up. I apologize. It was my fault. Yeah. And I will do whatever I can to fix it. Mm-hmm. But I did. I messed up. And I feel like if you go into a situation like that, like, yep, I messed up. I'm sorry. Let's fix it, though. Like, it takes out the fight out of them. Right. And like, oh, well, she said that she was wrong. So I guess I can only be so mad now. Yeah. Well, and communication goes a long way. Oh, it I does. Think, so in my industry, I would say the biggest frustration clients have is communication. Mm-hmm. Lack of communication. That's a, that's a compliment I get a lot is I do have adequate communication with my clients, whether it's turnaround time, if I get behind time on editing, Mm -hmm. like they know the expectation and when they're going to get their pictures up front. If I run behind that, I've reached out to them. They know what that expectation is. A frustration in the industry is maybe some studios don't offer that same experience. And so it can be hard when you're Mm -hmm. waiting six, seven, eight months, 10 months, you know, to see even a sneak peek or, Oh, that's a long time. You know what I mean? And so that's frustrating. Now that business may not be for that client, right? you know, but some that might be fine. Uh You know, it just, so I think it comes down to communication. Like if you set that expectation, like, Hey, I'm going to communicate with you. There's not a, a, a room for that you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you're owning your mistake already. Right. Like you've already beat the client the client to the mm-hmm. question. So um, I just, I pride myself on communication. And yeah. if you can communicate, even like with your situation, like, hey, I'm in the wrong. Right. I'll take care of this. Like it does. It takes the fight out of them. It like, does. Okay. You know what? She already said sorry. And she's human. And she's going right. to be right. So. Exactly. 
So let's turn and talk about social media. We've yeah. talked that you don't do a lot of like promotional stuff now, but how mm-hmm. do you use social media to promote your business? I mean, this is a huge question for you. Yeah. Because so, photos. Yeah. And, you know, the more people c- can see, the more mm-hmm. they, they want to have that and obtain mm-hmm. that. Um, social media is a time sucker. <laughs> it is. <laughs> like, I don't, again, going back to you can't do it all. Mm-hmm. I had to accept last year that I cannot handle it all. And I told my assistant, like, look, I need help. Mm-hmm. And so she brought in a girl who all she did was post on social media. We would dump images into a gallery. Yep. She would go in that week, spend a couple hours scheduling posts. And that's how, and that worked out really well. Bless her. She's moved on to a new opportunity. So we don't have that. And so there's probably been a lack of posting, but that's uh-huh. also because I I wear a lot of hats in my life. Yes, you do. And um, there's not a whole lot of time to post, you know. So um, it's not because I'm not working. Right. It's not because I'm not doing anything. Um, and so I I used to like say like, hey, you'll get a sneak peek in a week. Right. I can't say that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can't. Um, they'll see a sneak peek. But there may not be a time frame on that. Yeah. Or 24 hours or whatever. And it might be like a big drop of sneak peeks all yes, at once. Yes. Yes. And so, um, but, but social media has become so accessible for businesses um, with like Facebook Business Manager Suite. Mm-hmm. Um, it ties together Instagram and Facebook. For any business owner, I definitely recommend looking into that. You can schedule posts. You can, um, like, even down to your advertising, it helps, like, you beat the algorithm, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And kind of get out in front of your target client. Uh, and so I don't do a whole lot of paid marketing for Phoenix photos. Uh, I just, I can't take in more than what I'm already doing. So just continuing to show clients that I am working for, like that this is what we're doing, keeps them engaged and enough to keep things going. Right. But I know that social media, I wish I didn't have to have it. (laughs) It is like, if I didn't have a business, I would be off there so fast. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's. It's a time sucker. It is. It's like a black hole. And those dang reels. <laughs> oh, I know. And like swipe, 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 swipe. Yeah. So, uh, but social media is a great tool for for small business, especially in a small community like like ours. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So we've talked about sneak peeks. Yep. Photographers are pretty big about putting the sneak peeks out there. Yep. Uh, it's free advertisement, but then it gets shared, and some people, photographers, not people, may not always want like free photos being out there like mm. what what side do you go on like is it more of your selective uh is what gets shared or hey you share my photo as much as you want to because yeah. that's free advertisement I think I err on the side of share my photos uh-huh like I want you to have a great experience yeah you paid for that experience like you paid to get these beautiful photos mm-hmm. and they share them from the rooftops right and there's times that I don't even get tagged in it. But like I said, it's a big pat on the back. Like if if I delivered you 25 pictures and now all 25 are on Facebook, mm-hmm. like you loved your pictures. Yes, you, you know did. What I mean? And like that's mm-hmm. like that's a silent pat on the back. I don't need the accolades, but I appreciate them. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 I'm on that side of the fence. Yeah. Share away. I don't mm-hmm. need to control that. Like if I'm not proud of what I did, I shouldn't have given it to you. Yes, that's right? true. Mm-hmm. Like if, if at the end of the day, I don't feel like the quality is there, I should have done something different to make sure it was, whether that's offering a reshoot or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can count on one hand probably how many times I've rescheduled anything for uh, outside of weather. Right. Like I can't control the weather. No. But like sickness, whatever. Um, I can probably count on one hand. But when it comes down to it, I tell clients like, listen, I want to deliver I want to know that I can guarantee the outcome of your portraits. And uh-huh. so if I can't guarantee the outcome of them today, I would rather postpone them. Right. Um, and so that happens a lot in the spring here with, you know, rain, mud, uh, you know, but it's not because I don't want you to have those pictures right. on that date. It's because I want to guarantee the outcome. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to do all the pictures and then say, listen, we didn't get enough because that wind uh-huh. was just wreaking havoc on your hair. Yeah. So I would rather them have a, a quality outcome. Mm-hmm, for sure. But yeah, share away. Share away. Share away. So in photography in general, I feel like the same ideas kind of get reused mm-hmm. a lot. Like 
this idea might be done in New York and Texas and here in Wyoming and, and everybody's style is just a little bit different. Yeah. So with that, are you like in a group where you kind of like toss ideas around with different like owner, photography owners or is it kind of just like, you know, you're scrolling on Pinterest and you're like, oh, this is an adorable idea. I want to do this. This is my style. I think it's everything. Yeah. I, I'm in a lot of forums that, that they share ideas that have worked for their area. And I'm like, uh-huh. hey, that's really cute. So we actually did like when at the height of the Yellowstone era, um, there's a scene where Beth Dutton gets in a trough mm-hmm. and it's, it's really quite beautifully done. Um, you did one of them out at our house too. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I was like, we got to do that. Uh-huh. And then it was all over TikTok, like uh-huh. all over the country. I don't know that anybody did them locally except for me, but it was all over the country mm-hmm. and just watching everybody's take on that and the style on that was so beautiful. Uh-huh. And it, and then it got to be like, it wasn't even about Yellowstone anymore. Right. It was just like the beauty of the female body, uh-huh. you know, in nature, but not exposed, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, I, I watch everything at TikTok can be and reels can be a time sucker too as far as creative ideas go but just because it's been done doesn't mean you can't do it yeah for sure i mean we're artists Mm -hmm. i have my own spin so even though you did it i'm not going to do it the exact same yep did it one of my cows like come and chill in the background of their photos (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. that happened it did it's fine (laughs) yeah they're friendly cows at least (laughs) oh funny so you went to Arizona, or not Arizona, New Mexico. New Mexico. And for some reason, I thought it was Arizona. It was not. It was New Mexico. But I forgot that you had kind of came back and forth. So when you decided to fully move back up here, you didn't have to like rebuild your client base because you kind of maintained it while you were gone. No, I was extremely blessed. Uh-huh. Like I said, I was going through the darkest time of my life. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, was a single mom, um, trying to get my bearings scared out of my mind. Right. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to provide for my family? And this isn't a hobby. Right. Like this isn't a hobby. And the way that my clients rallied around me and like there was there was never a day that I didn't wake up and I'm like, I am so grateful mm-hmm. for this talent that I have been blessed with that is providing for me and my son. Yeah. Um, I some days look back and I could just cry because – I, I'm extremely blessed. I'm extremely blessed with the client base I have, with the community I have, um, because I, when I made that decision to go through that, it, it flourished. Right. Like I didn't, I didn't have to struggle. Right. Well, um, and, and not all small business owners can say that mm-hmm. and not all single moms can say that. And so I'm incredibly blessed that that like photography carried me through the darkest time of my life. Right. But then it also turned around to be one of the happiest times in your life. That's didn't right. It? That's right. So yeah. what happened then? You had your dark time. You moved back. Yeah. Your world imploded. I actually think that's probably why my my husband fell in love with me is <laughs> because of my business and my work ethic. So you found somebody else when I you moved did. back. I did. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he is amazing. Yes, yes. <laughs> You'll probably hear more about him later. But um, he a thousand percent was just like, you support your family. Like you, you do this for you. And so he was like, right from the get go, once he, once I introduced him to my son, he's like, let me watch him while you go do pictures. I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, I'm not going to put you out. Like I'll take him to my sister's. I have a great support network, but he just really wanted to be involved right away. Yeah. Like a couple weeks into dating, he was like showing up to do sign-ins for Christmas mini pictures. Aww. Like he was all in and um, yeah, he's fantastic, but yeah. he's super supportive. Uh, we do some sports pictures and he shows up and he's there to, you know, put the ball in the girl's hand, yeah. the kid's hands, um, shooting hoops in the background. He's kind of a funny guy, but he's very supportive of the mm-hmm. business. And so, yeah, photography was able to take me through the darkest time of my life, but also the happiest as yeah. well. So that's awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah. The the story, it just, it has a very beautiful ending. Thank you. It does. It does. So I've started asking our followers, the very few of them that I have right now, what questions they have for people that I'm interviewing. And I had lots of questions for you. Okay. So I'm going to actually read them because I want to make sure that I get them right. So this is coming from Anne in South Dakota. She wants to know, it seems with phones, anyone can take a picture fairly easy now. What differences does a photographer offer than a phone picture? Okay, we kind of talked we about kind this. of have talked yeah. about it, the whole experience. Um, listen, I photographers what they do 
is magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's pure magic, right? Like we are controlling the light. We are controlling every aspect of the engagement that you're having together. Mm -hmm. We're watching for the moments and not missing them. An iPhone can do great for the look here and smile cheese moment, um, but it's not going to get you know, you tickling your little one. And you see all the time that moms are like, dads, take pictures mm -hmm. of us, right? It doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. And if it does, it's the double chin angle. <laughs> like, can we get it right? Yes. But, so photographers, you're, you know, you're going to get the moments where it's, it goes beyond the pictures. Uh -huh. it, it literally freezes time. Um, and so, yeah, you can take great pictures with your iPhones, but it's not going to it's not going to provide you with the same experience. Well, that, and like you said, 90% of what you do is editing. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but my portrait mode and put it to natural sunlight is not the same edits no. that you do. And if you're going to blow up that picture 30 by 40 above your mantle, like you don't want the booger about beneath the nose. You don't want lunch from the day before on right. your son's chin. Like you don't want the stain that you didn't realize was on your blouse mm -hmm. there. Um, and so a a photographer can do that. You know, right. a photographer is trained through their talent um, mm -hmm. to look for those things that, you know, so yeah, we're creating. It's not just, it doesn't end with clicking the picture. Right. It's everything that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. So for sure. So the next one that I have, this one was from Brianne in South, or excuse me, in Wyoming. She wants to know what was the most fun request you've ever got for a client shoot double points when you can send me a picture to add to this video. Oh yeah. Okay. So I have a really fun client that every time we do a session together, she wants to incorporate some fun, some fun idea. Okay. Um, and so probably was five years ago. She was like, we want to bring the chalk bombs, you know, like how you can do like the, the color runs yeah, yeah, and they yeah. throw the chalk bags. She's like, we want to wear white shirts and we're going to throw chalk bombs at each other. And I was like, how's this going to photograph? You know what I mean? But it was so fun. It was so fun. Um, and then uh, she wanted to bring dyed water and squirt guns uh -huh. and wear white shirts and dye. Anyway, so she has some teenage boys and they just, they go ham wild with it. Like they are all about it. And just the true genuine laughter had nothing to do with the the chalk bombs, had nothing to do with the squirt guns, right? The It was just like the enjoyment that they yeah. were getting playing as a family those memories will carry with them forever. Uh -huh. Family pictures shouldn't be a burden. No. It shouldn't be. I mean, it, it, it is for every family. Like, you will smile. You will you smile. Will, <laughs> and you will get ice cream at the end. Like, And you will not fight with me about it. And you will smile and you will have fun, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, that's totally every family. <laughs> but, um, but have fun with it. Right. right. So like this mom has totally taken the aspect of, and I, I was nervous about it. Yeah. I'll be honest. Like when clients come to me with ideas like that, I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. You know, you know, there's a lot of movement, uh -huh. a lot of spread out. I don't know how it's going to photograph or if you're really going to want to hang that on your wall. But it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It was a unique idea that you just don't see in family pictures uh -huh. that really brought out their family's personality. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. So the other one that I have is Amy wants to know what are some annoying things clients do or ask for? So maybe we don't do them anymore. I, I want to tread lightly here Yeah, because I don't want to offend anybody, but at the same time I get asked often and this, this is just annoying. I only need a couple pictures. Mm. And what I do, it, it takes some education to them to be like, I don't just take a couple pictures. Right. Like that's not like I'm, I don't show up for five seconds and take two pictures mm -hmm. and deliver that to you. Like that's not how it is. Um, because again, it doesn't, it taking the picture is just the start of it. Right. The work really happens after taking the picture. Um, no photographer just takes a couple pictures. Yes. Like I could go to a wedding and take 3000 pictures. Right. You don't want just a couple pictures of your wedding day. And if you do, it's not, I'm not I, your photographer. Right. Um, we capture moments. Right. And that's not done in a couple pictures. Well, even like so. when we've done minis, you've taken anywhere from 50 to Ugh. 200 pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could, it, it just really depends on mm -hmm. the client. Um, we could do a 20 minute mini session, but in the end, I'm still delivering 75 to 100 mm. images to pick from. Yeah. Um, and they're not all the same. No, they're not all the same. All the smiles are different. All the poses are different. You know, all the positioning, lighting uh, could be different. And 
So asking a photographer, I just need a couple pictures to, in your mind, might be like, that's more of like a, I think a budget question. Yeah. Like I just need a couple pictures because I'm willing to spend this or I can only afford this rather than asking for a couple pictures, maybe say, Hey, I have budgeted this for, for this. Is there anything you can do within that, that range? Because I might be able to, right. to figure something out in your your budget. Right. I may not be able to figure something out for a couple pictures. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, and so, I like I said, I, I want to tread lightly because I don't want to offend anybody. Everybody's budget is totally different. Everybody's, you know, expectation is different too. Yeah, for sure. So I don't want to offend anybody. But a couple pictures is not a reality in this industry. Yeah. So I like that you have a solution though. Yeah. Like, Hey, I have, you know, $200 to spend. Do you have anything that you can do for me for $200? That's great. I love it. You see it all the time on Facebook. Like, I don't want to pay an arm and a leg. Well, what's an arm and a leg to you? Because to me, it might be different. There's value to it. So there's there's somebody that if you Google it, there's a value of what an arm and a leg costs. I don't know if I'll do that. Yeah. (laughs) But, but there, so, um, but that is different to everybody. Mm-hmm, exactly. To everybody. So rather than saying like, hey, I, I want a photographer that's not going to cost a lot, maybe say like, I'm looking for a photographer that's under 300. Right. And then all the photographers are like, okay, great. I, you know, I don't have a package designed under 300, but I might be able to figure something right. out for you. Exactly. You know? Um. And so it's, it, I think just being open, it goes back to the open communication thing. Like when we set that expectation, if the client also sets an expectation, those who can show up for that expectation are going to show up in right. your feed for that. So yeah, I, just a couple pictures, an arm and a leg doesn't cost too much. It's all, it's all irrelevant, <laughs> Funny. you know? So this kind of rolls into what I wanted to ask you next. So somebody who is in the market for a photographer, mm-hmm. like what would you tell them like to look for or questions to ask or questions about pricing? Yeah. So, um, I, I'm pretty transparent as mm-hmm. far as like pricing and stuff goes. I feel like if, if I'm your pick, I don't want, I don't want to have to go through a half an hour conversation to figure out if we're mm. going to be a good fit. Right. Um, so I pretty much put everything out there. Like if you ask for packages and pricing, I send my most popular ones and, you know, and then we go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, don't, I mean, but that is also discounting those that have a budget that may not fit my packages. So then we do have to have that communication. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess. I guess my advice would be like, depending on what you're looking for, if you're looking for a wedding photographer, I would ask questions like, are you experienced in indoors and outdoors? Mm -hmm. Like, can like, you know, or how many weddings have you done? Or what is your typical, you know, average? How many, how many do you do typically on average or something like that? Um, An experienced photographer will have done several in a year. Right. Right. Like I I actually, I don't think you don't have to do 30 in a year like I do to be a professional (laughs) wedding photographer. There's some that do five Uh and they're great. You know, that that's just their business boundary that they've set for themselves for timing Um, because weddings are a whole nother animal. (laughs) Um, I think the biggest question I would ask though, I would challenge people to ask your photographer is the turnaround time. Oh yeah. It's the biggest complaint. Like I said, in the industry, that communication, like still waiting for pictures. But if your photographer tells you like, Hey, it takes me six months to get your pictures back you know that up front and you're right. going to be okay with it. It saves a lot of frustration on both sides of, mm-hmm. of the spectrum. Um, I'm not a six month turnaround time photographer, but I will say that that's a complaint I hear about my industry that like, I had to wait so long for my pictures mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, did you ask right like, up front before you book? Did you say like, how long will it take to get my pictures back? Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. So I always like to ask towards the end of the interview, if you could go back, 10 years ago and give yourself some advice, what would you tell baby self? (sighs) Baby photographer. Baby business self. Um, Don't try to do it all. Yeah. Let some of it go. Mm -hmm. That, it was a hard lesson for me to to learn myself to say no. Uh Uh-huh. I probably was eight years in the business before So this has been reset. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And it it was at the detriment of my family time, you know, and like I, I, you don't need to, I would tell myself, you don't need to be desperate for everything. Mm -hmm. Let some of it go. Right. If you don't want to get pooped on, (laughs) say no. If you don't want baby diarrhea all over you, just say no. Just say no. Um, And so I I think that that's what I would tell myself really early Mm -hmm. on. I also would champion myself a little bit more to be like, 
you can make money at this. Yeah. It can be a lucrative business and it can be rewarding. So let go of all of the the outside stipulation. Outside, outside opinions go mm-hmm. of it. I get asked all the time, like, so is this just a hobby for you? Or what's your real job? And I'm like, listen. Listen. Man. Let me tell you. <laughs> this is my real job. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of outside voices that just mm-hmm. think that this industry is not a real job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let me tell you, it's a real job. It's a real job. So I would just champion myself, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, have a little more confidence and and just do it. Yeah, for sure. Well, this part of our interview is over. Yes. But this is not where the story ends. No, it continues. So this is going to be the first time I do a two-parter. So this is part one. Yep. And we are going to come back with a bridal boutique yes. next. So I'm excited and we're going to get the rest of the story. But... That's all that we have about Phoenix Photos for today. Can you tell everybody where to find you at if they want an amazing photographer? Yeah. And where you service? What area? uh, The whole country. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. You do. (laughs) No. um, We're based in Gillette. Our studio is downtown on 3rd Street. uh, But you can find us online at www.phoenixphotos.org or on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, we're under Phoenix Photos Photography as well as Instagram. And yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to connect yeah awesome and all of your links will be linked in the show notes perfect so perfect okay well that was an amazing story thank you for joining me i appreciate it thank you for having me yeah absolutely so as like i said that is an amazing story i love how she turned something that somebody would consider a hobby into a full-time career because it is a career And I will make sure to put up some of her pictures because you guys, they're amazing. I will put up some of my personal ones too because I've used her lots of times. Mm -hmm. So if you've been eyeing my shirt today, this came from Lost Creek Boutique. That is all that I have for today's episode. And thank you for joining me. If you would like to watch the video version of this, you can find it in the notes or by searching Brassy Business Podcast on YouTube. Make sure to follow the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok under Brassy Business Podcast so we can stay in touch. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And I will see you next week for part two. Brassy Business Podcast is a Black Cows production.